It being 4pm, private member statements are now interrupted for the consideration of the paper petition signed by 10,000 or more persons listed on the business paper, which is regarding Clarence Valley Mining lodged by the member for Lismore. And I will call the member for Lismore, who is joining us uh, virtually, to make a contribution. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. When I was asked to present this petition to this place, I readily agreed. I have long championed the protection of our water systems that flow in the north of our state. We're often referred to as the Northern Rivers and the Clarence is the Bigging. The other major rivers in the Lismore electorate are the Richmond and the Tweed. We know that these rivers are in need of repair and restoration and we're acting on that. These rivers are our lifeblood, sustaining livelihoods and lives. This issue, more than any other, goes to the heart of water protection, both quantity and quality. I have yet to see a clean water mining site or a site where the water has not been depleted. We will get told that the mining will bring jobs, and yes, it will bring a few, but think of the jobs that can be lost if we have our waters polluted. Thousands from our traditional and sustainable jobs. If we let our water be degraded, we risk our heritage and ongoing industries in, right across the region of dairy, fishing, cattle, sugarcane, blueberries, maccas, timber and tourism. The mighty Clarence flows from the McPherson Range and snakes its way with many tributaries through Tenterfield and Clay Oval, under the Tabulum Bridge, all areas in my electorate in the Lismore electorate. The Clarence, River, the Clarence River catchment has a big geographic footprint in my electorate. My call to action today is to protect our water. And today the focus is on the Clarence River catchment that locals want to protect from mineral mining impacts, the basis of the petition and the specific asks of the New South Wales government to give effect to the three concerns expressed in the petition. Stop mining exploration or exploitation within the Clarence Valley and surrounding local government area as it would endanger the Wharf River health, vital to fishing, farming and tourism, as the petition says, and to respect the traditional landowners of the areas being the Yagel, the Gumbangla and the Bunjalung First Nations peoples. I commend the Clarence Catchment Alliance for the voluntary work that they've done undertaken um, to improve our community, protect our community, and it's, it's evidence-based, it's informative, and it's all aimed at looking after our water health. There is overwhelming support for the petition and opposition to mineral mining. Clarence Valley Council unanimously resolved to oppose mining in the Clarence catchment and to seek support of both state and federal governments to impose a moratorium on further mining exploration licences and to cancel existing licences. In their preamble, they note the potential to pollute the waters, that some mining methods would involve the decimation of plateaus causing large amounts of sediments runoff, which could contain dangerous minerals and chemicals. They have the support as well of neighbouring councils, Coffs Harbour, Kyogle, Glen Innes, and the Mayor of Tweed Shire Council. They've expressed support for the moratorium, the cancellation of the licences or both. I understand that the matter is with other neighbouring councils. Tenerfield Shire Council was not able to do this. The council and I enjoy a close working relationship and that will continue as we both work for community common good. There are two other of proposed mining developments in our area in the Northern Rivers. One's in Tweedshire and one is in Drake, which is Tenerfieldshire, and both of them in the Lismore electorate. The Tweedshire councillors were aghast when confronted with an exploration licence that was from gold and silver, among other things, and it would cover a 118 square kilometre area, 16 suburbs and villages, and can you believe it, Moolamba itself. The council stated their concern about the potential to negatively impact the water supply, including town drinking water, 
catchments of the Clary Hall Dam and the Bray Park Weir, the Tween River, also the sugarcane production, and correspondingly, the tourism industry. They voted to oppose it. And for me to act, the vote, I, for the record, the vote was 5-2, but I have acted and I shall keep at it. In Drake, which is in my electorate, like fishermen remember the arsenic leaching from the character mine at Drake in the 70s, and the mutated seafood as if it were yesterday. The Mount Harrington Mine Gold Project is back on the books. I have said I shall fight it with every breath, and I shall endure it all of the way. Freaks that run real close are part of the Clarence catchment. The member's time has expired. Thank you, Madam Th Thank you, Member for Lismore. The question is that the House take note of the petition. I call the member for Clarence. Uh, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And first, let me acknowledge the extraordinary efforts of the petitioners to achieve over 10,000 signatures. It's a remarkable effort and certainly one worthy of debate in this House. Congratulations on your effort and, your, and the sentiment behind your, effort, your petition because I've lived in the Clarence for over 40 years and I love it because of the natural beauty and those people who actually want to preserve it, um, its beauty, its character and its lifestyle. And I say this with all due respect to the signatories as someone who is not pro-mining with no premeditated agenda and someone who wants to be objective, I find it very difficult to accept the argument put forward by the petitioners and that is to stop all mining in the Clarence Valley and surrounding local government area, point blank, no mining. No mining in the whole of the Clarence LGA, not just the water catchment, but the whole 10,500 square kilometres of the LGA. No mining, no discussion, end of story. That's a blanket refusal to extract the resources from the ground that we need in our everyday lives. Resources that have built this very place that we debate it today, like the bricks and mortar, the metal used on the roof or in the wiring to ensure our lights are on and our computers run. Resources that make our cars, trains and buses and everything else from, from the ground that allows us to function like a modern 21st century society. Yes, I acknowledge that mining can be intrusive and can change a landscape. It does have the potential to degrade an environment, but until we have an actual development application to approve a mining activity, we have no idea of the impact it will have on the environment. We don't know what's to be extracted, how it's going to be extracted, what measures are proposed to mitigate damage to the environment, what traffic will be generated, what jobs will be created, what benefits there are to the local economy, whether there has been consultation with the community and whether the proponent has a social licence. And there are many other questions that remain unanswered until such time as a development application is lodged. Every case should be judged on its own merit and not discarded without the right to be considered, Madam Speaker. A mining application will have to answer all those questions and have to satisfy uh, local and state planning policies and legislation before it can proceed. In New South Wales, we have a very rigorous planning and assessment system. Anybody in the development industry can attest to that. If you don't take my word for it, try lodging a development application for a house or a pool and see firsthand the criteria that must be satisfied before you can proceed. We have many checks and balances in our development approval process to protect our environment and our communities. Mining today is not like it was carried out in the past. The proponent must have a plan to rehabilitate disturbed areas and provide a security which is sufficient to cover that rehabilitation cost, the, the rehabilitation costs in the event they default on their obligation. Miners are under a very close scrutiny in this country and they are well aware of their obligations. If the application can measure up successfully against the planning policies, if it satisfies environmental, economic and social criteria, then there is no reason to refuse it. If it doesn't, then there is no reason to approve it. But unless a mining company has the opportunity to lodge a development application, we will never know if the activity can be carried out in an environmentally and socially accepted way. And that, Madam, Acting Speaker, or Madam Deputy Speaker, that's throwing the baby out with the bathwater because, as I understand it, the current exploration licences in the Clarence Valley are for metals with high technology applications like copper and cobalt, resources that are used to transition from carbon to a, a renewable energy future. If we want solar panels, batteries to store electricity, microchips for computers and electric cars, then these are the exact resources we need. 
And if we can extract them without impacting on our environment, then we are well on the way, well on the road to achieving net zero emissions by 2050. That's a target we all want to reach. The New South Wales government has already set a target of reducing emissions by 50% by 2030, and so we should all be mindful of the opportunities to continue to do so with uh, the mining of these sorts, these sorts of resources from our, our, our own LGAs. I repeat again, I love the Clarence Valley because of its natural environment and I will do everything I can to protect it and I will not support any mining activity that will degrade the very thing I love. Just as I did with my North Coast colleagues when we banned inappropriate coal seam gas mining in the Northern Rivers. Can I thank the member for Clarence. Uh, the question is that the House take note of the petition. Now, I did have uh, the member for Murray next on the list, but I am actually going to call uh, the member for Ballina. Uh, member for Murray, we actually can't see you very well on the screen, so you might just want to adjust your lighting. Uh, but I, I'm going to go to the member for Ballina and come back to you, member for Murray. Member for Ballina, you have the call. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise to speak in support of the Clarence Catchment Alliance's No Mines Clarence Valley petition, calling for a moratorium on future mineral mining, both exploratory and active, in the Clarence Catchment and surrounding local government areas. I do not share the members of Clarence's uh, trust or faith in our planning system, and certainly the track record uh, in the last 16 years has been appalling. I thank the member for Lismore for sponsoring the petition, and I recognise the Aboriginal people, custodians and traditional owners of the Yagel, Bunjalung and Gambangi nations who have lived, loved and protected the mighty Clarence River and the Clarence floodplains for over 60,000 years. This land always was and always will be Aboriginal land. I congratulate also the broader communities of the Clarence Valley and the Northern Rivers for signing the petition and the Clarence Environment Centre and Valley Watch for their advocacy, as well as Clarence Valley Council and neighbouring councils. Speaker, this petition received over 10,000 signatures from individuals, organisations, businesses and councils who are concerned about the impact of mining in the Clarence region. If you wanted to talk about social licence, there it is. We have a strong record of opposition to mining in the Northern Rivers and Clarence communities do not want their cultural history and precious biodiversity destroyed for the sake of a few short-term dollars. The social and environmental cost of mining in the region, a high biodiversity and heritage area, supersedes any other considerations. We've heard Aboriginal elders and community members speak about how integral the Clarence River area is to passing on cultural knowledge in the region. Aboriginal people have told us of the significance of this area. Speaking of the Minister for Planning and Public Spaces, does not amend Schedule 1 of the New South Wales SEP to add mineral mining and mineral exploration and the Clarence catchment as prohibited development, we will see even more harm caused to the traditional custodians of this country. The Clarence Valley is situated in a unique biodiversity hotspot. Uh, it overlaps with the Bassian species of Southern Australia and the Teresian species in Northern Australia. It's home to some of Australia's most beautiful creatures including the endangered eastern freshwater cod, platypus, eastern water dragons, and the surrounding forests are essential habitat for powerful owls, black-necked black storks, brogues, and koalas, and the list goes on and on. Madam Speaker, I've swum in the Nimboida River, a tributary of the Clarence, and it is one of the coldest and most exquisite freshwater rivers in Australia. Too precious to lose. The Clarence River is also integral for providing fish fresh water to all of the communities surrounding it. Finally, Speaker, the latest IPCC climate change report made it abundantly clear that time is running out to act on the climate emergency and that the mining and burning of coal, oil and gas need to end as they are exacerbating our climate crisis. I support the petition wholeheartedly. Thank the member for Ballina. The question is that the House take note of the petition. I call the member for Dubbo. Uh, thank you, Speaker. It's good to be here today. I want to acknowledge the uh, previous speakers for their contributions, including the member for Clarence, who spoke with passion and clarity, I think, on this debate. You can have it all. I guess that's the point of what he was saying. He doesn't support mining that will damage anything, but this is exploration we're talking about at this particular point in time. And in government, the role is to promote business, promote investment, and do it in a way that can work for everyone. This includes significant opportunities in the New South Wales mineral sector. 
In 2019, the government released its New South Wales Mineral Strategy outlining just how our state can unlock the benefits of all the potential high-tech mineral deposits. And I'm well aware of uh, the concerns around some. I have a very uh, highly profitable possible mine in my region exactly based on rare earths and metallisation. Minerals like lithium and cobalt are critical components of batteries, including those used in renewable energy storage. When you talk about a climate emergency, it's renewable energy types. Whether it's wind turbines, solar panels, battery storage, they all rely on minerals that are needed to be taken out of the ground. They don't grow on trees, they need to be dug up from somewhere in a safe way. That's the point. Electric vehicles. They've been in the news a fair bit lately. A vehicle that produces no tailpipe emissions, lower air pollution, lower running costs than petrol or diesel equivalents, equivalents but it uses up to 15 kilograms of cobalt. Again, needs to be dug up safely. Now I'm proud that in June the government announced a strategy to increase the sales of electric vehicles to 52% by next decade. It's one of the many things this government's doing to help New South Wales achieve net zero emissions by 2050, including the nation's most ambitious hydrogen strategy just unveiled yesterday. There is also growth in demand for those more traditional type metals we're talking about, things like copper, one of the metals that is looking at being explored for in the Clarence Valley. And note those words again, explored for, not mined for, explored for. And exploration delivers vital investment dollars into regional communities, especially at a time when the economy is seeking to bounce back from the impacts of the COVID pandemic. Now, when you look at things like cars, so a petrol fueled car uses about 20 kilograms of copper, a hybrid car about 40 kgs and a full electric car as much as 80 kilograms. A 1.5 megawatt wind turbine is manufactured with as much as 1800 kilograms of copper. It doesn't grow on trees. Somebody's got to get up from somewhere. The development of critical mineral resources is also a key part of the regional development strategy set out in our 20-year economic vision for regional New South Wales, launched back in February. And minerals development is highlighted as an engine industry. Critical minerals specifically identified as an industry of the future, along with industry investment in recycling and waste management, high quality food manufacturing and ecotourism. All these things can work together. Jobs are essential to thriving regional communities. Critical and high-tech minerals exploration helps create jobs of the future and it helps do it in regional areas. Now opponents of this exploration would also oppose coal mining, but if we're serious about diversifying from coal-reliant communities, then this type of exploration is one of the answers we need to be looking at. Growing our critical mineral exploration and mining sector is also important for security of supply. Here in Australia, and in fact right across the world, it's becoming a priority to find other new sources at a wider range of locations so that the world isn't relying on a small number of countries to supply global needs. We need to be investing in integrated mine to manufacturing strategies to help reduce supply risks, create those jobs, and ensure regional communities can continue to thrive. Uh, now, one of the key pillars of the New South Wales mineral strategy is making sure that New South Wales has best practice regulation. That will ensure that miners who mine in our state do the right thing, and everyone gets the fact that there is a concern. But as the industry changes over time, we'll continue to adapt legislation and systems to ensure they remain fit for purpose to support the sustainable growth of the minerals industry. It is part, a big part, of our future. Clear, robust, transparent and efficient regulations create certainty for industry and transparency for communities. And most importantly, the granting of an exploration licence is just a very preliminary stage in the approvals process. A licence to explore is just that. This petition would cut off those vital investment dollars and deprive an important area of New South Wales from playing its role in the push towards a renewable future. Now, as has been said, exploration. Around the Clarence region, about 10,500 square k's, according to my learned colleague, uh, there are parts of the region that could be explored and explored safely. This petition cuts everything off, cutting off the nose despite the face. Let's be sensible. Let's look at ways we can explore and do things together for the betterment of all of our communities. Thank the member for Dubbo. The question is that the House take note of the petition and we'll now go to the member for Murray, who's joining us virtually. Member for Murray has the uh, call. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Although the Clarence River lies a long way from my electorate, I can relate to the 11,000 people who signed the petition we are debating today. The Clarence, I'm told, is the second largest river in our state by volume, 
and it flows with the regularity that is the envy of the irrigators I represent. But, like my own constituents along the Murray and Murrumbidgee, these petitioners do not take a single drop for granted. Their efforts to bring their concerns before this House today prove how keenly they understand that water underpins all our prosperity. The wealth of the land, agriculture, the fisheries, as well as the stunning environment, our natural environment that draws in tourists from near and far, all rely on the river and its tributaries. Madam Speaker, there is no reason why the wealth of this land should not last for generations. There will be challenges to be sure. Our changing climate will affect swift coastal rivers like the Clarence, just as it will the slow brown rivers of the country where I farm. But done intelligently, done sustainably, with foresight, with wisdom and with a sense of stewardship, our lands and rules will support our Muslim nation long into the future, just as they have supported our First Nations since the time and memorial. But the mining that is proposed in the Clarence, Madam Speaker, threatens that prosperity, the sustainability. It puts at risk not just the natural environment, but the farmlands and the communities that depend on it. Of course, I'm not against mining in principle. The wealth from within the earth is, an essential, is essential to our society as the wealth we grow on the earth. Mining offers jobs, income, and even, historically at least, a sense of community, identity, and pride among the workers. But we have to be smart, Madam Speaker. We have to be strategic about why, where we site our mines. And the catchment of our state's second largest river is not a smart choice. The diversity of the petitions attests to this fact, and it does not surprise me. In my elected too, one thing that never fails to unite rural communities is the conviction that farmland and water resources should never be sacrificed for short-term gain. There is too much at stake. Back at home, some engineer proposed drilling through the aquifer to reach the gas deposits below. Can you imagine it, Madam Speaker? The water that sustained us sustained a century and a half of sustainable farming and grazing could have been sacrificed for 10 years of fuel, fuel that the rest of the world is transitioning away from. It's the same in the Clarence, Madam Speaker. The modern methods of mining, the cyanide ponds, the chemical residues, they risk contaminating the land long to the ore is sacred, the jobs are gone and the profits are taken away. I'm terribly worried that we have lost the ability to think in the long term Politicians can't think past the next election. Businesses can't think past the next quarter. All across our state, I'm shocked by the poor planning decisions that even now, in 2021, just don't get how, our precious, how precious our water is. Along the Murray, thirsty almonds on sandy soils are sucking water away from the sustainable food crops that have fed our state uh, for a century. The Water Minister is still committed to floodplain harvesting that her own department tells her is illegal. That by the next drought will drain the mighty darling dry. Water has just become another commodity, bought and sold like stocks on a computer screen. screen. Traded away in a heartbeat to make a quick buck and leaving a dry and poisoned land for our kids to clean up. In the crowds, the community are literally being asked to sell their river for gold. I am heartened by this petition, as a community united by its commitment to the long term and who see the deeper truth that water is more precious than gold. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Can I thank the member for Murray? The question is that the House take note of the petition. I call the Minister and Deputy Premier in response. Yeah, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And I, I want to thank the various speakers for their contributions to this division debate. But as the leader of the National Party and the Minister for Resources, we need to clarify a few facts. The Act of Exploration Licence over the areas in question are entirely consistent with the New South Wales Minerals Strategy. As highlighted by the previous speakers for the government, we support the sustainable growth of the state's mining sector. And it's crucial we continue to take advantage of these metals with high technology applications like copper and cobalt. Mr. Speaker, oh, sorry, Madam Deputy Speaker, the Clarence Valley area currently has no mining proposals and only three companies which are undertaking mineral exploration on active exploration licenses. 
Two of those licences relate to a disused copper mine which closed down many years ago, in fact, around 1917, even before the last pandemic. During its life, it was one of the most successful mines in the state, producing copper, gold and silver. The ore was mined a long time ago, and these two exploration licences at the centre of this petition allow the legacy stockpiles to be located and assessed, creating an opportunity for recovery over time and a benefit today from past mining. It's hard to see how anyone could oppose that. The mighty Clarence River and its more than 20 tributaries travels through many towns on its 400 kilometre journey to the sea. The water network is important to everyone. No one, whether an environmentalist, a teacher, a tradie, someone who works in that town wants to risk this. And that is why embedded in legislation for mining exploration and development approvals the government has stringent regulations when it comes to monitoring and managing water resources. The New South Wales government supports the sustainable growth of the mining sector and exploration activity to identify commercially viable opportunities for minerals. The New South Wales government is also investing more money than ever in legacy mines program. In the June budget, the government injected another $180 million into this program. A former gold mine in the Clarence electorate on the Timbara Plateau has been developed in a wetland area at the head of the Clarence River east of Tenerfield. The site of the former gold mine is now subject to a mining reserve that prevents any further exploration and mining at the site in perpetuity. This highlights the balance the government is always seeking to strike when considering minerals exploration. The supporters of this petition will be advocates for renewable energy, but those emerging technologies require batteries and critical minerals to power them like cobalt, cadmium and lithium. Exploring for those minerals is critical to the state's economy and vital for the nation's energy sovereignty. It's one thing to oppose coal mining, but to oppose all mining as a blanket position would be in peril as our drive towards a low carbon future. I acknowledge the views of the Clarence Valley locals, but for the reasons I have outlined, the government does not support the petition. I thank the Minister. The question is that the House take note of the petition and I call the member for Lismore in reply. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I thank the members for Clarence, Murray, Ballina, Dubbo and the Minister for Resources and Deputy Premier for their contributions and for the respectful way in which we're able to have this discussion, start the debate and um, it, it, I mean, it pleases me to be able to do that because that's what our communities want. We disagree, but we have a respectful debate. On the issue of the social licence, what I'd like to say is that the companies, you don't have a social licence, we know that, to mineral mine in our northern rivers and surrounding local government areas, which includes the Clarence Valley catchment. It's best to reconsider your intentions. There'll be a lot of disruption, a lot of angst, a lot of pain, and you won't get to mine here. We've fought off coal seam gas mining, as the member for Clarence said, and we ended up united on this, despite some partisan posturing on the way. For me, it started with water. I read what the then National Water Commission and the CSIRO revealed about the impacts on our water, the quantity and quality, and was alarmed and set to work. I'd also like to thank um, my parliamentary colleague, the federal member for Page, King Hogan. He's expressed his opposition to this proposal and said that to both the Clarence Valley Council and the Catchment Clarence Alliance and he supports the advocacy of us, which is an amendment of Schedule 1 of the New South Wales State Environmental Planning Policy, Mining, Petroleum, Production, Extractive Industries 2007, to add as prohibitive development, mineral mining and mineral exploration in the Clarence know. catchment surrounding local government areas that feed our water source. I commend the petition and seek as the start of the debate. Thank you. Thank you, the member for Lismore. The question is that the House take note of the petition. All of that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it.